Hey everybody, what's up? It's Patrick from Ignite Nerd, and today Samurai Wolverine gets his face. For this part of the project, it was a team effort. Katora so graciously sculpted and painted this, and I came in between those two steps and made the resin casting. For everyone playing at home, here's a little scorecard of all the materials that we used for this project. Okay, let's get started. For this project, I used Monster Clay Medium Consistency. For the base of this project, I am using a foam mannequin head, and I just cut the back off so it would lie flat on the table. Ideally, I would like to use a life cast, but we are trying to use what we have on hand. Because I ended up using a foam mannequin's head versus a life cast, I did have to go in and add clay around the mask so it actually would fit Pat when this was done. For this mask, I didn't really have a drawn out plan of what I was doing prior to starting sculpting. I did go on Pinterest and find a few references of other Oni masks, and then I kind of just played around until I found something I liked. When I was working on this mask, I did start in the center with my sculpting and kind of worked my way out towards the ears, so that way I wouldn't accidentally bump a detail or smudge something. When I was done with my base sculpture of the mask, I went back through and sketched in some details lightly in the clay so that way I could keep it symmetrical later on down the line. Before going too much further with the detail, I went back through and added some texture on the mask to kind of give it that hammered metal look. Monster clay is a heat sensitive clay and to make it more pliable you need to warm it up. Most of the time my hands are warm enough to get the clay to a state where it's easy to work with. But I also use a little crock pot and a heat gun. Now that I'm happy with the mask, it's time to add some finishing details. Now it is back to Patrick so he can explain how he molded and casted this project. So while we were filming this, I realized we have used this technique to make a prop or a piece for a cosplay before in the past. And I've never really actually gone into detail about what it takes to make a mold and make a cast from that mold. And then I got to thinking, there are a lot of videos out there that detail this process, probably a lot better than I'm going to, but here I am, you're gonna have to listen to me. So, molding and casting, let's get going. Before you get into any kind of brushing on silicone or pouring any resin, you wanna make sure that the master or the model you're using is mounted so it's stable and so there's no open areas. And what I mean by that is when you're brushing on silicone, it's gonna run down. You don't want it running behind your model. So to make a mold for a mask, or you see this a lot for helmets as well, you want a brushable silicone, like Rebound 25. 
one key thing with having a brushable mold is you can peel it and pull out your master. So for something like, you know, a mask, you don't want this huge block of silicone. Just like pretty much any smooth on product, it's super easy to use. The ratio is right there. It's usually one to one, one to two, no brainer. So when you get your silicone mixed up, the first coat when you're making your mold is very, very thin. And this is just a detail coat. You wanna make sure all the nooks and crannies, all the low spots are all filled with silicone. So when you go back and start layering on more silicone, those fine details will show through in your mold. A bit of advice when you're brushing on your silicone is make sure that any bubbles you see, pop them. Because if you don't, they're gonna be there forever. You generally wanna wait about 30 to 45 minutes between each coat. You wanna make sure that it's tacky before you start brushing on more silicone. And we did this three times. We did three thin layers of silicone. A little tip when you're making a brush on mold, change the color of your different layers. That way when you're brushing on a new layer, you know you're covering everything. We use Silk Pig, which is just a fancy way of saying a silicone pigment. And the final layer of silicone, you want to thicken it. We use another product from Smoothland, it's called 5X. And this turns a kind of a syrupy consistency silicone into something a little more like cake batter. And just the point of that, it's, it's primarily a strength thing. You've now got all the details locked in. You want to give like a nice solid base behind all of that so your mold doesn't rip or tear. Now, when the silicone finally cures, and we let it cure for, oh, about 24 hours. They say it cures within like an hour, but we like to err on the side of caution and let it go for a full 24 hours to completely set and harden. I mean, and I say harden, it's not rock hard, but it's, it's no longer a liquid. And when you're done, you're left with something like this. I mean, you got your details on the inside, you got your details on the inside, but it's, I mean, you're not gonna do go very far trying to slosh cast or rotocast with a floppy thing like this. So that's why before you pull it off of your master, you gotta make what they call is a jacket mold. And that's why this is now has a rigid foundation that you can pour your resin into. For the jacket mold, we used yet another smooth on product that's called Plasti Paste. I don't really recommend Plasti Paste. There are better alternatives now. When we did this, that was pretty much all there was on the market. But let me tell you, there are some really good clays and some other good pastes that create way less of a mess than Plasti Paste. With that said, yet again, it's another easy mixing ratio. I mean, it's, the instructions are clear on the two packages mixed together. It looks like kind of like, a, the consistency is kind of like an applesauce. You know, there, there's fiberglass in it, so there's strength coming from that, and you just smear it all over your mold. You want to make sure everything's covered, and it hardens pretty fast. It hardens in about 30 minutes. But again, we let it sit for a day just to make sure everything was truly hardened. Now with your silicone mold done, your jacket mold done, everything's set up and ready to go. You've pulled your mold off of your master. The last, final, final step you need to do is put down some kind of mold release. That can be baby powder or it can be a spray. It's finally time to get into using some resin. And the resin we used for this project was Smooth On's Smoothcast 65D. And that's just, it is a very quick setting, very viscous resin. And when we used that because a mask is hollow, right? Well, the best way to make a hollow piece is by using what they call rotocasting or slosh casting. It's basically you take your mold, you pour a little bit of resin in, and you just slosh it all around to make sure everything is all covered. And it'll set up within five minutes. The process of mixing, mixing a little bit of resin, pouring in the mold, sloshing around, you do that basically until you're happy. Um, you can make it super thick, um, you can leave it super thin. 60, smooth cast 65D is actually, it's semi-rigid, so if you leave it thin enough, it will be somewhat pliable. I mean, it's not like, it's not like silicone pliable, but there will be some give to it. But as you build up the layers, you build up strength. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing a rotocast, 
keep it moving. As long as that resin is liquid, it's gonna pool. So if you just hold it there, it's gonna make a super thick spot and you don't want that. So make sure it's moving and, and covering everything. And, and you know, it's really kind of cool to watch it set up because it sets up so quick. It'll go from a clear to a white. So you know when you're ready for your next coat. With the resin finally cured, it's time to demold. And you wanna go slow, you wanna take your time. There's a lot of details that are gonna usually in these molds. So as you're pulling out, you don't want your mold to rip. Just, just take your time. And when you're done, you'll have a beautiful piece. If you wanna look at a couple other creators that probably do a way better job explaining what I just did, look up Bill and Brittany from Punished Props. Or Lightning Cosplay. Both of them are masters when it comes to making molds. The only thing left to do is to clean it up. The little flashings around the uh, inside edges needed to be trimmed and sanded. I had to cut out the eyes, but that was really easy to do. I just used a carbide cutting tip to cut out the eyes and I used a sanding drum to clean up all the edges. And with that done, it was back on to couture for painting. Before we start painting, I'm gonna work on the fangs. For Wolverine's fangs, I ended up using an epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is a two-part clay epoxy, and it has about a two to three hour workable time, and it cures in 24 hours. After mixing, I let it sit about 10 minutes before I start sculpting. I use rubbing alcohol to erase the fingerprints. Now the Wolverine has his fangs, it's time to paint. For the paint, we just used your basic acrylic paints. When I paint, I like to black out my base colors and then go back and shade them. The hardest part about this paint job, it was trying to match Patrick's cell shading work on the armor set.
painting and the casting and the mold making done, Wolverine has one awesome face now. And for the three of you who stuck it through to the end, thank you. You guys are the true heroes. My mom doesn't even watch this. I've shown her where YouTube is, I've shown her our channel, and I still can't get her to watch it. So to the three of you, thank you, thank you very much. And for everybody else, I've said this over and over again, I'm pretty sure it's standard at this point, but I guess I gotta say it. Please like, please subscribe, let us know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. And for extra, extra credit, look up Harrison from Volpen Props. His sloss caching is well worth a look. Ugh. <sighs>